um, in the run up to COP last COP28 last year, um, we brought together a group of young leaders to map 50 or close to 50 local government climate action strategies. We took um, the publicly available climate action strategies or uh, environmental strategies that each local government had uh, published publicly on their website in their PDF format and basically translated that into um, the one planet structure as Ben spoke about of outcomes, what they were wanting to achieve, actions, the policies that they were implementing to achieve this and indicators um, if they did have any metrics within their plans that they were using to track that progress of their actions or their outcomes. Um, and so from this, we had two outputs. We created the, the sort of UK local government ecosystem, um, which is basically an interactive database now of uh, these different climate action plans, all joined together around some shared outcomes. And we also created the Young Leaders Climate Manifesto, which was basically us as young leaders, we took a look at all of the different, we used the one platform to look at all of the climate strategies that we had mapped and kind of identified what did we think were sort of 30 outcomes that local governments should be working towards and used the strategies that we had already mapped to identify any key actions that we thought that other local, that local governments were doing that might be useful or um, could maybe be reproduced by other local governments um, to contribute to those outcomes that we had identified. So yeah, next slide. So yeah, just to summarize the UK local government ecosystem, which is mostly what we'll be focusing on today. Um, as I said, an interactive database of climate action. Um, yeah, so we've got 45 climate action plans mapped so far. Um, we are hoping to continue to expand this work and I mean, the dream is to get every single climate action plan mapped, but we'll see how we go. Um, and so, yeah, the ecosystem really is an opportunity for um, anyone, whether it's a local government, so a community member to explore um, what each local government is doing um, and what does good climate action look like. Um, it's an opportunity to um, identify learning opportunities and where you know if you've got two local governments that may be in the same county or a similar area or trying to achieve similar goals it allows you to collaborate and learn from one another and also by having your climate action plans published in a much more interactive and engaging way it enables you to engage with your stakeholders better and hopefully increase impact um, so I am just going to sort of show you what is publicly available currently on the One Planet website, um, which can, you can access whenever um, it's open to everyone and you don't need the login to access it. Um, so I will just take over and oh, no. Oh, yeah, I'll take over. And yeah, yeah, that's easy. easier. Okay. Um, so this is the UK local government climate action page on our website and yeah we just have a bit of a outline of the um, campaign and how we created um, all of the mapped all, out all of the plans and so these are all of the plans that the young leaders have mapped so far so as I say I think we've got nearly 45 climate action plans here that have been um, translated into the one plant structure and Today, I was just going to show you as an example, Winchester City Council as um, I'm from Winchester and this is the one that I mapped. So um, I thought, let's take a look at this one. Um, so yes, when we open the plan, it looks a little something like this. Um, and we can see, um, so all of these colours here that you can see relate to um, the One Planet Living Framework that Ben mentioned earlier. So all of the yellow nodes are to do with health and happiness, orange to do with zero carbon energy and so forth. Um, so what we can do here is we can hide all of these 
and maybe just focusing on um, one particular area. So I've chosen zero carbon energy here. And as I say, um, we've got the outcomes here. Um, so what is the overall um, goal you're, that say Winchester are trying to achieve? So their energy outcome is to reduce energy emissions by X amount. And then these are the key policies or actions that they are taking in order to achieve that. And these links here are communicating that, so this action is contributing to this specific outcome. And then we also can see here that there is an indicator that directly relates to the progress of that outcome as well. And so when we click on these, we can see a sideboard bar opens here. We can see more details about it, and we can also see um, the additional information if there is any about it also. Um, and then you will notice here as well that we have um, these circular nodes that have a white border around them. So these here are the shared outcomes. And basically what this means is these are the nodes that are being used to connect these different local government plans together. Ben will, um, dem ben will demonstrate in a bit a bit more about um, what that means and how that works. Um, but yeah, so, and as I say, so you can focus on a specific area of a plan or you can start um, seeing all of the different elements and bringing them in and how it all fits together around these different, uh, around these different categories. So, yeah. I also as well, we were talking earlier, sorry, about um, how the platform can be used to sort of communicate those co-benefits. Um, the benefit of having being able to view the plan in a mind map means that you can link specific actions that say, in so in the strategy, for example, this Winchester movement strategy was directly linked to their transport outcome. But actually what we can communicate here is, you know, by increasing your cycling and walking, you're actually having a direct positive impact on health and well-being as well. So this is how the platform helps you sort of communicate some of those co-benefits. I'm going to pass um, back over to Ben now so that he can actually show you how these shared outcomes work and um, some of the benefits of the wider benefits of using the platform um, through logging into the workspace. Thanks, Neve. Hopefully that's working. Are there any questions on that so far? It's nothing so so far. This is this will now get into the more um, kind of hopefully more exciting element of, of the, the platform. So um, you can see, so this is the, and if you'd like the login to the account, we can provide you with a login, email us, us later. So this is the, the actual um, uh, workspace with all of these plans connected together. So uh, if we go to the, the plans here, we can see there are about a hundred that we've mapped. And if we open up the, Winchester one again, we can see that we have it in um, in the same mind map uh, view in the in the account. I, I don't know if Neve mentioned we've got there are different lenses, so we can see it in the COP lens or um, the Sustainable Development Goals. So we can see how the the um, the different uh, see if there's any gaps uh, it, 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 against those different frameworks. Um, there's we can go into the table view, which enables us to then just get a list of of actions. This is where you can start assigning them to people, and you can filter by you know who's who's response find which action you're responsible for and, and manage that action here. So you can still come in and uh, put in a progress update. Um, or uh, in an indicator, update your your data, and then all of that information can go into a into a report. You can filter that report and see which bits of the information you want to put in, um, set a date, and then and then create a, a report. So all of that is linked uh, together. So that's um, just to give you a bit more detail on how this the single platform single action plan could be, be managed. Uh, if we look now at, at the shared outcomes, so we can see that this uh, maximising renewable energy 
this is a shared outcome that's that's come from our ecosystem plan. And if we go back to the dashboard, oh, go to the dashboard, uh, there's a space called connections, and this allows us to explore those connections. So we um, created 20, uh, 21 shared outcomes to link all of them together. Um, and if we open up one of those shared outcomes, we can see everything that's linked to it in one across all of those. So 50 action plans so far might you know going to be up to 400 action plans. So that's a lot of information. This is seeing I want to look at all of the all of the um, activity relating to health and well-being across all of those plans. It's a bit overwhelming, but we can then filter that and say so maybe we're we are interested in health and well-being, but we really want to look at just those um, transport related activities. So we can now see all of the transport related activities to, to health and well-being, but uh, we might be interested in one specific geographic area. So we've set it up. So, OK, if we just want to see what's going on in the southeast and London as well at the same time, we can now see all of those those activities. Um, so this is all of the actions that have been directly linked to the, the health and well-being outcome. Uh, sometimes there's been outcomes linked. So this is an outcome from Horsham District Council. And if we then uh, click on that, we can see the outcomes that have been linked to that. So we can then get a picture of, um, of all of the actions uh, being taken. This is you know, in London and the South East around transport contributing to, to health health and well-being so um, this is where we think you know people can come in and start seeing uh, are there best practice examples that I can take that I can use in my own strategy can I see that there's within a particular region lots of people doing the same undertaking the same action but there's no no collaboration going on on there I can now you know contact those those people and see their and start looking at how do we link up our cycle routes or how do we um, uh, how do we expand our controlled parking zones, whatever it might be. Um, are there any questions on that component of the platform? Sarah, yeah. Um, so you just mentioned it can help you see where uh, there are collaborations or where there may not be collaborations. How would you be able to see where there are gaps and then you can contact people. So from at a specific um, plan level, um, so we went through um, a pick on the kind of the Winchester the plan and we um, identified so 20, 21 common goals across most of the climate strategies we've seen. And then using um, the, the filters, we looked at yeah, each plan, what are they doing on different aspects? What are they doing on water? What are they doing on food? And, you know, and often identified that there were, there were gaps in, in the strategies uh, there um, in, in that way um, and use this as then sort of linking up. We had a, a node not, not being directly addressed. So that's how we can first kind of uh, review a specific um, a specific plan. You can do that in different lenses as well, so it's quite helpful that sustainable development goals, they have more focus on issues around equity um, and, and you know, notice immediately that there's very little gender equity in any climate strategies in, in the UK. So you know, seeing that, seeing that uh, come up. Um, at a kind of across all of the um, action plans, at this level we can see that this is the number of, of, of nodes that have been linked to each plan. So we can see that in terms of health and well-being or green local economy, across the plans we've mapped, there's 128 kind of uh, goals that have been linked to that. Whereas, say, around local and sustainable food or public supporting public transport, there there is less. So that's a, you know another way of getting a sense of where of where gaps might be. Um, uh, if we come into circular economy, actually a number of these that we've linked up, it's where they've not, this this goal has not been directly addressed in climate strategies. So we can go through each of these 
goals and see you know where where, where there is a gap across all of those plans. Thank you. Bill? I wonder if the structure of first and second tier authorities is reflected in here. So, for example, Norwich um, doesn't have a mandate to manage highways. That's with county council. We, you know, we don't manage care or schools, etc. Is that reflected in the functionality? So, um, so I was just going to say, I think on that, on like a particular example like that, I think what we've learned from this process and for us as young leaders, kind of, you know, working with them and going through this is a lot of the time what it comes down to, say, is actually communication. So you know, and outlining, say, in your strategy that, um, you know, if there are certain areas that are out of your control because they are controlled by the county council, you know, really highlighting that in the in your strategy so that people are very aware of, you know, what you have direct control over and what you don't. And so in terms of that, either that will be if, say, we were mapping a local government and they have highlighted that, kind, you know, that kind of information of, what they have control over, what they don't. Therefore, that will be mapped on the platform. But if you're not communicating that, mm -hmm. we've not mapped it, you know? And so I think that's really what it comes down to. And, you know, I'm sure some people might look at what we've mapped on the platform and think, well, we are doing that. Well, we are doing stuff around sustainable water or, oh, but we are doing, you know, stuff around sustainable food. And it's, it's all about communication of, okay, that's great but you haven't informed in your strategy or at all that we have actions that are addressing food, but they're in a separate strategy. So it's kind of a level of communication and yeah. Thank you, it's really useful. Oh, also, sorry, I, myself. Still, I was just gonna quickly say as well, um, it's worth noting as well, obviously we're looking at this in a kind of mind map web view um, of what's all contributing to this particular shared outcome. All of this can also be, um, all of that information here can also be viewed in a document view as well. So um, yeah, you don't have to look at it in a kind of linked view. You can see, okay, circular economy, and then all of the action plans that are contributing to that will be listed as well as their outcomes and their actions that directly link to a circular economy. I just wanted to add that in. I can show that if we have time. Yeah. I th um, but Phil, I think that's a really interesting point. We've only thus far looked kind of created geographic teams. So you can look at, as we said, like, OK, let's let's look at everything that's going on in uh, east of England. Oh, there we go. So that's the information there. But we could just have another set of teams that were unitary um, two tier, whatever, and, and, and then be able to see, OK, what what's what are all of the unitary um councils doing around transport that you know that's a more useful comparison to make sarah i just had a a point to make that i'm not sure yet with one planet but i i can vision that it could be really really useful for two things one is for new starters in an organization to get a, an overview of how climate change um um works in relationship to other teams but also to see what other partnerships there are and other um strategies that it links to so i think if you're a new starter it could be a very useful tool to help people get an overview of what's going on and then wider links between the council and other councils and organizations um and my other point is do you think it could be helpful for it we, we can often be so overwhelmed with case studies and finding best practice to learn from so could this be a good tool to quickly find case studies if enough councils or organizations um subscribe that's definitely a that letter point is definitely a goal that we um and will at the end just show with the with the young leaders manifesto where we're trying to uh summarize i guess the best practice rather than give a, di a directory we we've identified you know, ac actions that we think are having the greatest impact and then link to okay you know this is a, a local government that's delivering that action 
so so you can read about it but also you know potentially contact them uh the first point you, um you make yes yeah i mean that's really so where we're working closely um with with local governments so in uh horsham there we are you know, really looking at linking together all of their strategies so you can see if this at a council level is is our you know five core goals that we have you can see how they are represented in all of your all of your strategies um which from a communication level is great but also then just a kind of reporting and management level is, is works too um i think it's radika and then phil if that's okay yeah, hi. So, uh, so, um, uh, so after we discussed the gaps, so my uh, like a follow up question was that how do you also see which um, outcomes uh, and which actions are are actually bringing around the maximum amplification of the goal? So, how do you? I mean, is there a weight on you know like assigned to you know what is kind of you know doing better performance wise? You know, which action and which kind of collaborations are working well and why? So. Uh... I was going to share to uh, stop sharing to try and get the reporting going, but I'll I'll just come come back. I think so. Um, that's a really you know, perceptive question. Thanks. So at the moment, particularly within strategies, you know what we we are able to do is link up um, outcomes to uh, actions to multiple outcomes. So we can see that um, one action is contributing to to many outcomes and. So see that there the might be actions that are conflicting with with outcomes. Um, yeah, an area of development for us then is actually putting some weighting on, on a link, like being able to visualize actually there's a negative um, link between investing in roads and active travel or you know, whatever it might be. So being able to make those um, to, to make the, those links and then using that to kind of assess a plan um, like where are the, which are the actions uh, so at the moment it's we do it visually but yeah we want to build in um, yes yeah, simple querying which are the actions that are contributing to the most outcomes that have the most weight which are the ones that maybe have a negative impact also as well just on that note what we have done um, when we've worked with other um, customers is we've created for them an impact lens so that they can lay over their plan so obviously we're looking at this at the moment through the one planet living lens but we could we can lay over an impact lens which then you would be able to identify which actions are high impact which are medium impact which are long you know which are low impact which are quick wins which are longer term actions etc um so we can also sort of communicate that um with lenses however we haven't done that um for the for this local government ecosystem in particular. However, it is something to think about. Um, All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, I think I've got a, a similar or related question to, to the last one. Who was that by? Was that Radhika? I didn't see anything flashing on my screen, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it is around performance. I mean, you know, common sense suggests that there should be good correlation between good quality climate action strategies and plans and and the performance of measurement, which I guess is ultimately a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from those territories or geographies. Um, I'm just wondering if, you know, how we correlate that. Sounds very similar to the last question, perhaps. Um, but you know maybe the correlation isn't that strong and actually there's really good action happening that has a different cause and it would be fascinating to find out what those causes might be future development stuff just just kind of you know shooting an idea there um but my point really relating to the platform is is um is around good quality evidenced need which I think is a really important thing. So, and I'll explain what I mean. What we're seeing here, incredibly useful, is, is kind of outcomes, action oriented thinking. But motivation, I would suggest, comes from um, showing the urgent need to take such action. And for me, I think 
you know, in, in our green bubble, we are painfully aware of the need for urgent action. But I'll tell you now, my our senior leadership team is less so. And so I spend much time working out how to articulate this thing that is unfolding with you know terrifying pace in our in our lives across the world and and for me that's a really important thing to have in a climate action strategy and I, i'm just wondering if if you've looked at the quality of the evidenced need is what is what i'm calling it it's, does that appear in in your thinking anywhere um it's, it's quite a few questions there. <laughs> um, the, the need side of things and then there was another point um it's the it, metrics it's it's you know it's it's measuring performance and yeah. correlating it to, to good quality plans that's obviously gonna you know that's a five-year project you know we all get defra um territorial emissions data which give us pretty good idea as to whether we're actually being effective in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in our geographies but yeah it would be interesting to, to see if that relates or can be correlated to good quality climate so I think action strategies um, no that's really interesting there's three three areas we're looking at there on the need side of things one of the um approaches we've been taken is is really a, sort of mentioned in the presentation but not here is being able to highlight the co-benefits of climate action so um what we've done with other local governments is say take the climate plan and look at you know, how is how is the health strategy organized it might be around you know promoting activity mental um, improving mental health and eating well we can lay that over the climate strategy and you can and then the health team can look at the climate strategy and see oh this is how it contributes to, to my plan or the local economic development team can see how it's contributing to the local economy and so, so that's one element uh, another element is we are building what we're calling best practice templates like looking at what is the kind of national regulation national requirements that ultimately comes down to local go local government to be delivering and being able to to put that together succinctly and be able to show okay this my climate strategy is addressing these national requirements um because um you know as, as someone else been working in the environment field forever kind of we've we've come to the approach of let's try and understand other people's motivations and show how climate contributes to that rather than try and get across the urgency of the climate situation because we've tried that and it's, and it's doesn't seem to be working uh, and the final point just around the, the metrics again one of the things we noticed was yeah, there's very little consistency in, in what metrics are being used by local governments can we identify five that are that, that are easy to track that are possibly being measured already for other reasons and and you know and, and have um, used that as something that every local government tracks and then we'd be able to get some kind of kind of uh idea of, of of performance but there is that time lag um i suppose final point on that we you know we have built into the platform the idea that um monitoring shouldn't just be around indi you know, numeric indicators so within all of the um the nodes whether that's an indicator or a or a action there is the ability to publish a story and say okay you know this is this is what happened to kind of make it more of a narrative around the, the performance but sorry that's quite a long long answer but there are a few questions there i could i just spend 10 seconds just sort of making a suggestion i i actually think that we are starting to get traction on the scientific evidence now because people are seeing it with their own eyes on the news and so I, I agree that having a template of legislative drivers is really useful. But I also think it would be useful to have a template of the scientific evidence. And, and you know, the IPCC's AR6 report, for example, gives, gives, a, gives us a good start. You know, most of us saw it for 10 seconds on the news as code red for humanity, but we never get under the bonnet of it. And, you know, we're starting to hear things such as 
sea surface temperatures are now too high for coral reef survival etc it's that i haven't got time to research all of those things but they really do get buy-in from people now um and it would be useful to have a, a kind of a template evidence section that i could just drop into our our strategies that is hard hitting is reference to you know um to you know good quality scientific material that's peer reviewed etc and that that's the sort of thing we don't have time to do that's just, just a suggestion thank you for hearing that no no it's it's thank you for that i mean but we're so we're looking at the policies you know, really the idea is we can create a, a set of tools that are useful in that way so uh, it's help, really helpful to hear that l yeah super thanks for just coming in there i think to support phil um, because you hit the nail on the head, I think, when you said you don't have time. So we know about Project Drawdown, we know about all of the global reports, but who has the time to start trawling through all of those? I know that Unimia, uh, based in London, had produced some local authority reports, and of course, Ben Puran and the One Planet team are very closely connected with Small World Consulting, uh, which, as you know, is uh, Mike Berners-Lee, How Bad Are Bananas? So I think the guys do have access um, at one planet they do have access to a number of different reports and being able to collect collate some sort of repository i'm not sure if it fits on the system but you know the, ben neve they'll make that decision but i know there are also lots of other different re repositories and phil you might not but is there someone in your team uh, do you have a research assistant who can go search by topic for you I mean, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, for example, Project Drawdown, there's a, there's a swathe of different repositories, and I'm just wondering in the value of creating another one, or is there value in connecting, making links into existing um, I mean, portals? For me, it's 10 hard hitting and short paragraphs or something, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's that simple. Okay. That, that are, you know, are widely recognised as because I yeah. think we've and all shied, shied away from future projections because of yeah. the inherent uncertainty that comes with climate projections. But there's such a strong international consensus now on what is going to happen. Thank you. That, yeah. um, you know, it, I think we're at the point of being really confident that we can say these things. Super. And, and, and do you think those kind of you know, five or six really hard hit reports. Should they be addressing things such as air quality, such as water quality, all of those things that we know are, are interconnected into climate change? Or do, do you see hmm. other kind of, um, or is it about the publication source? So is it no, by it, it, it is my topic. topic. So it, for me, it's sea level rise coming from a yeah. county that's very much impacted in it. It's uh, the migration that we're likely to see as yeah. you know, climate change. Uh, there's three and a half billion people globally that are highly vulnerable to climate change. So it's it's the it's the really very significant shifts that we're going to see in people movement, biodiversity, extreme weather, sea level, etc. It's those things that we can all relate to, I think. But that's where I've been taking it. It's much harder to arrive at a, a kind of consensus set of local um, impacts. You know, yeah. air quality will vary whether you know, you're an urban or a, a kind of rural um, geography, etc. Okay, and water stresses. I mean, I think we yeah. tend to food not worry water. about that until it's yeah, food absolutely critical. Super. Um, I'd love to chat with you about that, Ben, but I won't take up the time today. Phil, thank you. I think it's a, a, a great point. Thank you. Pleasure. Muted. Sorry, Susan. If you've got a question, and then we can just um, wrap up. Yeah. Thank you. It was actually about. Um, how how this gets updated and changed because you know great that you used Winchester thank you very much and um, very very useful demonstration for me um but we are just about to well we've published a, a new action plan we've changed our focus we've changed our priority you know these things are under review uh, you know as time gets closer to our targets we have to to have to shift our priorities how do you see this being updated I mean obviously you've put in lots of information from our from our um, online action plan, I guess. So it's just understanding how these things can change, update, and and be used as a as a sort of an agile and live tool. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm, I use that to sort of slightly segue into um, ne next steps. And, and uh, so, I mean, one of the things we've we've done is we really um, we'd be very happy for people whose plans we've mapped to take ownership of their plan and you can you know, access the workspace and you can update the, the plan and put in more more, um, more information there. So um, it, that that's you know, clearly one one way um, we will if we can keep enough for sort of momentum and interest in in um, updating the plans and uh, mapping more plans. You know, we're we're going to keep doing that. But I think we there'd be much more benefit from people taking them on local government taking them on themselves. And if we've got enough that are seeing the value in doing that, then you know, it, it, uh, there there will be. Um, I think we get a good momentum for, for people doing it. I'll just go through these and then I'll come to the question. So sort of opportunities that people might want to pick up on on here. Um, do if you'd like to access the ecosystem um, itself and search uh, as I sh as we showed you, um, there is also a search tool that you can just search. Yeah, I want to know what tree planting is happening in, in across the country you can you can find that so contact us about that if you're interested in taking ownership of your plan susan you'd like to update it please get in touch if your plan's not shown and you're interested in you know in, in mapping it um you know, please contact us we are running a free training program to take people kind of guide people through how you would map a map a plan it's aimed at so expanding the young leader network, but um, we're all young at heart as well. So, you know, and anyone can participate. Um, and if you'd like to know more, just just contact us as well. Uh, there are still a few hands raised. L, did you have another question or is that left over from before? So Joe, you were next and then Chris. Ah oh, yes, thank you. Uh, it was kind of building on uh, Susan's question about uh, updating how plans get updated and move forward. So um, I'm from Cornwall Council. Our plan was written back in 2019, so we're now five years on from from that plan. And if we just took the plan and mapped that into what looks like, like a quite a powerful and interesting visual representation to look at activity and and collaboration. So so thank you for the demonstration you've given. But if you're mapping plans as they stand in terms of the updating, we haven't updated our plans, but we we've taken the approach. It's not about putting more into updating our plan, but actually the activity that we're taking and the actions that we're taking across the council, which wouldn't be picked up from that. So that is an interesting question. But then the second part of that is, do you link in any way with the council climate action scorecards? Um, that the Climate Emergency UK undertake. Um, let me jump in on on the the first question. I mean, so, so that's really where we've um, it, where we've worked closely with local governments developing a climate strategy. The the goal, in effect, has been to make the climate strategy as small as possible by linking it into the transport plan or the landscape plan, so that those elements of the climate strategy that link to, to transport, to health, to, to to landscape are not really in the climate plan and it's focused very much on the, the elements that are, are there. So um, and then the updating on the landscape related activities happens kind of in, in the landscape plan. So that's the the way, you know, if you're using the platform across all of your your plans that it that it works uh the scorecards we have spoken with the, with the scorecards um people we would like to look at um can we is there an opportunity to 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 enable the um so, so to put a lens for the scorecards for example onto the to the uh the platform are there then indicators or actions that people are required to report on for the scorecards that you that could be done on the on the platform and then all of that information could be could be joined up and you could you know compare there so it's it's something we would we would like to and we have had conversations with them Neve, I assume you're about to add to that and then Chris, please yeah it was it was just in terms of um you know you were saying about update you know how how do updates work how do we update the plan 
the platform isn't static so it does mean that it can just be consistently updated as and when you need you know if it is a case of okay we don't really you know we're moving away from having a strategy to just you know wanting to focus on the activity and the actions that we can deliver you know within the platform all of that you know all of that can be mapped all of that can be communicated I think that's the thing as well you know the platform and as Ben has shown you can open up an action and you can add different sort of progress updates stories pictures case studies to really um, kind of almost like bring the strategy alive in a sense and I think really the aim here is just to try and communicate to not only um, your internal departments not only just to fellow local councils, but also to the community, just a lot more interactively and a lot more engaging what it is you are doing as a um, as a local government um, around around these different issues. Thank you. Chris. Yes, thanks, Ben. I didn't want to lose the opportunity to highlight the um, Innovate UK Pathfinder project we've got running with you guys in the South Downs National Park area um, mainly in relation to Winchester because and Chichester and some of the authorities within our patch if they are keen to look at the platform and how it might sort of drive collaboration within their area it's certainly worth a follow-up discussion so particularly in relation to Chichester district I'd be keen to talk to Sarah and others down there um, fairly short order if possible. Thanks, Chris. Tom, did you put your, yeah, did you, do you want to jump in? Yeah, go for it. Sorry, we're aware of that as well. So yeah, it's partly why we're on the, the call today is to find out a bit more about it so that we can come come back to, to you in the National Park and, and have that discussion from a uh, from a basis of understanding more about what, what the uh, the platform is. So yeah, we can follow that up outside this meeting. Thanks. Neve, did you want to just just wrap up with explaining then the the young leaders climate manifesto, kind of more of the the case studies that from it? Yes, yeah, so sorry, yeah, because we've only got um three minutes left. So very, very quickly, um, as I mentioned kind of at the start. Um, of this session, the, in mapping these strategies, we then use the platform, those different elements that Ben showed you, you know, the connections tool, the search tool that we have, so you can type in key terms um, and start exploring, you know, what outcomes there are around, take the example of tree planting, um, what actions there are. And from that, by looking at the existing activity, but also what we felt as young people, we sort of wanted our futures to sort of look like and wanting um, our local governments to be aiming towards. Um, we came up with the Climate Action Manifesto. It's made up of um, 30 shared outcomes. Um, and then we've mapped these on the One Planet platform and um, we've linked to them some of the key actions that we identified from the local government database that we created. Um, that we identified as sort of best practice. Um, we've linked some case studies or examples um, to these. And yeah, really it was just an exercise to sort of encourage, you know, councils, businesses and communities to sort of deliver joined up action together around um, a, com a common set of, to provide a common set of shared outcomes basically um, that we can all be working towards. Um, and it's just worth mentioning here, we are, um, we have a, an event at the House of Commons at the end of this month on the 28th um, in partnership with Rewired Earth, um, where we will be presenting this manifesto that we've made um, to um, a group of MPs that have been invited. Um, another thing we will be looking at is we're actually working with some young leaders in the Cayman Islands, and I know that someone brought up earlier I think it was um, I think it was Phil that brought this up this this idea of climate what well, this idea this this inevitability of climate migration and you know the Cayman Islands are a British overseas territory they are very very um, you know their land is becoming a lot more sensitive and a lot more prone to uh, climate change and climate destruction so 
um, they have written a report about the climate risk to their um, to the Cayman Islands and the fact that you know they will be, due to this will probably need to migrate and you know exploring this idea because or exploring this topic because it doesn't really get migration gets talked about a lot but not in terms of climate so kind of really shining a light on that and you know looking at the UK government's sort of responsibility their accountability and how that's going to be dealt with and then also finally discussing this idea um, for an office for joined up government which is basically trying to you know break down the sort of party politics and focus on um sorry ben something's popped up on your screen um it's popped up again <laughs> um and um and yeah just discuss this idea for a joined up government across parties um with the core focus of trying to get climate action done um but yeah if this is something you'd like to attend um we'll send out the slides afterwards um there is a link there um for you where you can express your interest um we do have limited spaces um of course but yeah if you would like to attend um yeah brilliant thank you neve so i understand we've actually slightly everyone so if you need to drop off please do but yeah i mean please uh, we will send around the presentation and um information on how to access the ecosystem so there's free training sessions um we'd love it if people wanted to take ownership of, of their action plan and update it uh, we'll send information on the the young leaders climate manifesto we thought we might have time to show it but but not uh and do yeah let us know if you happen to be in westminster or London at the end of the month and are interested in, in attending, we would we'll see if there is space for that. But um, thank you very much for your time. That was a really interesting discussion. So really appreciate all of your, your inputs. Um, and we will send send the information around afterwards. Thanks. It was really useful. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, really we useful. will fill, we will offer another webinar. <laughs> right. Thank Thanks. you. I'll be there. See you. Thanks a lot.